In this demo, we're going to learn the basics of task modules in Microsoft Teams and how to collect input from users in a custom task module. So after you create a new Microsoft Teams personal tab, we're going to add two task modules to it. Uh, one is going to be a standard HTML page that accepts an ID of a video on YouTube. Uh, when the task module is then invoked, it's going to display the video using the YouTube embedded player. And this task module is going to get the video ID from the query string, but it will not need to return any information uh, back to the calling tab. The other task module is going to be implemented using React in the same way that custom tabs are implemented using the Yeoman generator for Microsoft Teams. Um, this task module enables the user to specify the ID of the YouTube video to display. Once it's changed, when the user saves their changes, it will use the callback to close uh, and submit the new ID back to the tab. So let's start by creating a Microsoft Teams app. So I'm going to go to my command prompt. I'm going to jump into the folder where I want to do all of my work and we're going to create a new folder called Learn MS Teams Task Modules. And then I'll jump into that folder. Now I'm going to start the generator by running Yo Teams. And I already have this installed. Now Yeoman's going to launch and ask me a series of questions. So I need to answer all these questions to create my project. So I'm going to, the solution name is going to be called the YouTube player. I'll use the current folder. Um, what's the title of the project? Uh, the, I'll just leave the default name and we'll use the default manifest that's provided. Uh, I'll choose quick scaffolding and then I'm going to say that I want to create a tab. Uh, I'm going to leave the default option for uh, where do I want to host the solution. This can be changed later. Uh, I would choose the default option for showing a loading indicator. And then the name of the tab is going to be called YouTube Player 1. Uh, this is going to be a personal tab, so it'll be static tab. And we don't need a uh, single sign-on, so I'll just select no here. So what this is then going to do uh, is that this is going to create the scaffolding for the project, all the files and folders that are necessary. And then it's going to execute npm install that's going to download all the dependencies that are required uh, for this project. Now, um, once this project is created, we're going to be using a tool called ngrok to create a secure routable uh, URL back to our local host web server where it's, all our stuff is going to be hosted. And that's because everything that's loaded inside of Microsoft Teams has to be loaded from a secure routable uh, URL. It can't be just local host. Um, so ngrok has two different versions. It's got a free version and it's got a licensed version. Um, each time you run the uh, free version, which I'll show you how that looks like when I run gulp ngrok serve. Um, it's going to generate a new dynamic subdomain for the URL. Um, and but and you can see that here uh, in the command prompt where it's got this one, two, three uh, subdomain. If I stop this and I run it again, I'm going to get a new subdomain. Now, if ever I have to restart ngrok, you're going to need to repackage and update the app in Microsoft Teams so that it's aware of how to get to the app that's hosted locally on your local machine. The optional licensed version of ngrok um, allows you to define and reuse the same subdomain. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up on my machine because I have the license copy. This is not required. Um, I'm just doing it because it just simplifies the demo a little bit uh, for me instead of jumping back and forth and changing the URLs. But you need to keep that in mind if you're not using a license copy. Um, I can change that here inside of the environment variable uh, setting uh, file in our project. I'm just going to set it to my name because I've already set up my license key and everything on this machine. And so that now when I run uh, ngrok serve, you'll see the URL that spins up is going to be pointing to Andrew Call ngrok.io. So that's always going to be the same. Now, once that gets started, let's go launch uh, Microsoft Edge and let's take a look at what we have uh, once this once our application is up and running. So we're still waiting for the web server to fully start. While that's starting, we'll just go ahead and start navigating to it. Okay, so it's not set up yet. So we'll just wait for just a minute. There we go. Now it's all set up. So now what we can do is I refresh the page and we can see welcome to our YouTube player. And then I can take a look at our tab by grabbing the URL for our tab and sticking it on the end. And we can see here, here is um, our tab. 
So now let's load the tab inside of Microsoft Teams. So I'm gonna to go to teams.microsoft.com. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in, which I'm already signed in as uh, my uh, test user, Megan Bowen. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install our app. So I have here Microsoft Teams. I've got my little test uh, team that we can play with, Team 548. So I'm going to go to uh, the dot, 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 and I'm gonna install a new local, um, my new, uh, my app that I've just created. So I'm gonna choose upload a custom app for me and my teams. And I'm going to go find the project that we just created. There's my task modules, uh, package, YouTube player zip. So you can see our YouTube player listed right here. And then it's got some of the to do's that are here that we just haven't filled in. Um, those aren't important right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select add to install our app. This is going to upload the package. And then now once it's installed, you can see here's my tab that's been pinned to the uh, rail over here. Um, and when I go to it, you can go to my tab. I can see the information about my tab and we can see that it definitely recognizes it's in Teams because it's showing us the GUID uh, for my team. Now notice that when the content page is loaded as a tab inside my Microsoft Teams, it's displaying the value of the entity ID property of the tab. That's what this GUID is right here instead of the message that we saw previously, which is not in Microsoft Teams, uh, which as you saw when you were viewing the content page in the browser. Um, the tab can detect if it's loaded within the Microsoft Teams client using the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK. So let's make some changes to our project here. So I'm gonna go back to the code and let's implement the personal tabs uh, user interface. So I'm gonna come over here and go into uh, client, YouTube player, and then here's my tab. I need to update the import statements um, to add some components from the, uh, the Fluent UI library. So here under header, I'm gonna go ahead and add in input uh, to this as well. Now, I need to update the state of the component to contain a video ID. So I'm gonna come down here and find where I have my other states already defined. I'm gonna create a new const. And then I'll use the use state hook in React to pass in either a string or nothing. And then I'm gonna use a default video here that we have uh, that I know is on the Microsoft 365 develop, uh, dev channel um, on uh, YouTube. So we can have like an initial uh, video that will be displayed. Now, I'm also gonna add a couple methods to our class. These methods are gonna handle updating the state when specific events happen. So let's go ahead and add these right down here after you use state. Okay, so we have show video and we have on change video. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I'm gonna to need to update my user interface. So that's inside of the return statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the return statement with the following return statement. And this is gonna display a brief copyright and stuff like that. So at this point, our Microsoft Teams app has been set up. It's implemented as a custom personal tab and set up and it should be working properly. So we're gonna go ahead and verify this by starting up NGROC again. So we can take a look over here and see if it's still running, which it is. You can ignore these ESLint errors uh, for now. This is just uh, saying that I'm using different spacing than what the ESLint settings are all set up for this project. That's not important for the, the case of this demo. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore those errors. So I'm gonna come back over here to our project and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh uh, the page here in the browser and we can see that we do have an ID and we have these buttons. We don't need to use the, the a non teams interface we will use the real microsoft teams interface now so just refresh this page and yes we can see that our tab is loading and everything is working exactly as we would expect